OPT stands for Optical Projection Tomography. The word tomography itself simply comes from the Greek of tomo, meaning a cut or a slice. Before OPT, there was a kind of imaging gap where it was easy to take three-dimensional images of very small microscopic specimens with something called a confocal microscope. And it was easy to take three-dimensional images of a whole human with things like MRI and CT scanning. But there wasn't anything that was really ideally suited for samples that would be maybe between one millimeter and one centimeter. And OPT is kind of perfect for that size range. The very first step is the labeling step of the sample. And this will vary very much from lab to lab as to what they're trying to see. The first step that's sort of OPT specific is to embed the sample in a gel so that it can be held firmly so that when it's rotated within the machine, we can rotate it to very precise positions. Once the agarose has set, we can then uh, take this little block and glue one end of the block onto a metal mount. We then cut it into a, a block and we then have to do this clearing process. When you do staining, you do want, of course, the light to be absorbed rather than going straight through. But in order to pick up the, the labeled regions, ideally, the rest of the embryo almost becomes invisible. This allows you to get very sharp images and sharp reconstructions. This is the original homemade, as we call it, uh, OPT machine. The motor is here, and this is connected directly to the position where the sample is attached. Down here we have the imaging chamber. On this side here, we have the transmission illumination. The basic idea is that you, you have to rotate your sample about a particular axis, and then you have to image the sample from an axis which is orthogonal to that. So this is the, um, the commercial version. Everything that you need is designed into the machine. The setup is very similar to the original homemade version and we have the magnetic plate for attaching the samples and for allowing them to slide around in order to get their position right. The longest axis of the sample will be lying along the axis of rotation. This is the most optimal way to get good information out of the sample. Instead of focusing on a particular plane, we actually focus all the way from the, the, the front to the back of the specimen. The 400 images, which is what we typically take, each one of them is, uh, has lost the depth information and we only gain that back when we computationally integrate the images with each other. One particular collaboration we've done which was very successful is using this to analyse mouse models of diabetes where the numbers of the islets of Langerhans, which is the, the little organ that produces insulin, uh, gets reduced as diabetes pr progresses. Yeah.